So if you are a lover of single eyeshadows, you are in the right place because in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you all kind of my maximalist <laughs> collection of single eyeshadows, a ton of one and done shadows in here, really beautiful, sparkly, wet look shadows, but most of them are in pots or they're just, you know, single pan shadows. I have a lot. This is kind of like bursting at the seams. I don't know if you guys can see that. I'm also going to be doing a little bit of a declutter uh, speed reviews of every single formula that I have tried because at the end of the day, the reason why I have so many is not just the love of makeup, but the love of different formulas. Formulas are really what get me excited. It's definitely a huge emphasis here on my channel. And I'm always trying to find and discover new and innovative formulas for you all. So if you're excited and if that sounds interesting to you, I would love to have you back. So make sure to subscribe. And if you are personally a fan of these really big kind of collection style videos, giving this video a thumbs up definitely lets me know. And get ready because this is going to be a ride. So I thought we could start off with um, a formula that I'm very familiar with that I've used for a long time, which are the Hourglass Scattered Lights. This is a pretty kind of classic sparkly top coat single shadow formula. And I have personally found these to be one of the more finely milled of this style. Next, I'll actually talk about the Bodyography Glitter Pigments and do a bit of a comparison. Hopefully that's helpful. But I thought, hey, let's kind of share my collection with you all. This is the shade Vivid. And I purchased this around the holidays a while ago. Like a couple holidays ago, I think. And really, it's an absolutely insanely beautiful green shadow. Something that you'll probably notice is just how incredibly smooth these are. You know, not a lot of glittery eyeshadows have the kind of smoothness that I am typically looking for, but these do. They feel really luxurious. This is actually one of my favorites, if not my favorite, um, which is the shade Smoke. An absolutely insanely beautiful shade. Now, if you're someone that loves kind of a taupey brown, mm, there's really a lot to love with that one. It you know, for me, it's actually not as dark as some of my other Toby Browns, which is something that I really like about it. It's smoky and a little sultry, but not too smoky and not <laughs> too sultry. So a great balance and has a great kind of glossy effect while also having a decent amount of base pigment. Now this is Burnished. This is a new shade to me. I have not even swatched it yet, but I have a feeling that for those of you that love, um, Oh my gosh, yeah. If you love a warm toned gold, that is going to be right up your alley. That, that is really something special. Super pretty. It's not what I typically go for. I don't go for super warm shadows a lot, but that is a very beautiful color. I also have Ray here. And this, as you can see already, has become kind of my go-to um, favorite one and done shadow this summer. I can't highly recommend this one enough. Like I have kind of just not been wearing anything else. This is a little bit more of like a, a deeper champagne versus burnish. I personally think Ray is just the perfect everyday kind of look. All of them have these just absolutely gorgeous fine glitters. And then lastly, I have this shade, which is Rapture. And Rapture is just a very beautiful cranberry. Again, I don't know if you guys can tell just from on the finger how smooth these are. I'm gonna put it up here. But Rapture is definitely the most pink out of all of them. But there are all of the shades of the Hourglass that I have. I certainly need to declutter, but I'm not going to be decluttering any of these. So just ignore all of these. So here are my Bodyography Glitter Pigments. I have five. And I really wanted to kind of do a quick comparison for you guys on this formula because they're similar, you know, these versus the scattered lights, but they're not the same. So here's the shade Stellar, super pretty, lots of shine. And what I think you'll notice immediately, just, you know, the difference between these and the ones from Hourglass is they just have a little bit more base pigment to them. 
and the just the glitters aren't quite as fine but that doesn't mean that that's a bad thing necessarily it depends on what you're looking for you can see that they're not pressed as densely i think and they just have overall more pigment and more reflection now you can still get them to be very smooth and kind of lie down onto the eye very evenly but again it just depends if you're looking for a more refined glitter or you're looking for something with you know more impact both are very pretty now this was the shade stellar this is the shade sparkler for pretty this is the shade prism i was very excited about this it's a little bit more duochrome than i was expecting though i was hoping this would be um a dupe for vivid from hourglass but you can see they're quite different still very pretty kind of that brown green shift so if that is up your alley this could be a really good one for you i have the shade get down right there definitely more smoky and not quite as wet looking as some of the other shades these definitely have more reflection and then last but not least we have my favorite which is off the hook this is just my perfect kind of everyday shade taupey brown that i always talk about that i love so those are all of the bodyography glitter pigments really a very pretty formula you should just go and purchase the color that you like the most because i'm kind of nitpicking here i think both are great but i have just found that i like more of the shades of the hourglass versus the bodyography i'm not using this shade get down a lot so i'm going to go ahead and declutter it and then i'm going to be keeping the rest let's talk about another staple formula in my collection which are the charlotte tilbury eyes to mesmerize it is a cream eyeshadow formula and I have just found personally that for beginners, it's just one of the easier formulas to work with. You can see they're quite whipped. This is one of their newer shades. It's Exaggerize. And I just, I can't get enough of this shade in particular. The sparkles in here are so fine that I think if you're not someone that wants a ton of sparkle, but you do want a little glimmer, these will kind of catch the light in a very subtle way. So, so beautiful. Definitely one of my favorites. I have Oyster Pearl, which is my most favorite. I've loved it for years. I just find it to be the most sophisticated one and done shadow. It has a beautiful defining base pigment. It looks kind of elegant. It's that, you know, model off duty, subtle taupe eye. You can build it up, you can sheer it out. And it's so easy to work with that it makes for a really perfect kind of everyday makeup product. Now, some of the other shades I'm not as a fan of. So one that I'm not a fan of is Sunset Rose. It's just, it's not a shade that I particularly like. Um, here it is. I don't, I don't know what it is about it. I guess I just don't uh, reach for shades like this typically. So I think I am going to go ahead and declutter that one because again, we saw the situation. I should definitely get rid of some. So I'm going to declutter this one. Um, this is the shade Mona Lisa, but I believe it's called Chocolate Brown. I'm going to be keeping this one. I think it's a really pretty shade. And there it is. Really good for more of a smoky eye base, I would say. Now, I wouldn't wear this on its own um, just because I would want a little bit more reflection typically. So I would go in with like a sparkly top coat on top of this. And then lastly, we have Star Gold, which is good for the warm gold lovers. Now, I think that this is actually more of a unique gold. Really a pretty pretty shade but if i'm being honest i'm usually reaching for you know exaggerize over this one but it is a very pretty one so i'm going to go ahead and keep the rest of these let's go ahead and tackle uh ritual defee now the ash and ember eye soots are a really interesting formula I i've talked about these on my channel for a long time and what you are noticing here is the old packaging which is has a smaller opening here and um, a little bit more height to the component. Whereas now they have redone 
the packaging. It is glass. It's flatter and shorter, but the opening is wider, um, which does make it easier to get the product out, especially if you want to use your fingers. But here's the thing. Not all of these are technically the eye soot formulas. These are the celestial sphere formula. So we'll talk about those in a second, but these are all the eye soots. I'm going to be getting rid of a lot of these because a lot of these have dried out. I've had them honestly for like five years. So I definitely think that it's probably time to go, but let's give you guys some swatches of the new ones. So this is the shade Fauna. You can see I can actually stick my finger in here, but the formula is the same. Um, it has this kind of sooty quality to it. It's kind of like a pigment mixed with an oil. It's very interesting, kind of something between a powder pigment and a cream shadow. So there's the shade Fauna, very, very pretty. I have the shade Mineralia. Honestly, these shades are giving me anxiety. <laughs> trying to remember how to pronounce them. That is really perfect if you love a smoky, grungy, kind of forest dirt kind of vibe. I mean, look at that. And this has a lot of pigment in comparison to the other ones because they're not pressed as densely. So you can pick up more pigment, but you can still see it has that kind of sooty ash quality to it that I think is what makes these unique. I'm glad that they didn't reformulate that aspect of them. And then lastly, I have the shade Flora here. This is a lavender. I really do need to pick up some of my favorite shades in the new um, component. Now, I wasn't as excited about this shade from what I remember. Yeah, it's it's very pretty if you like these more like lavender tones but I don't really see myself reaching for that. So I think I'm going to pass this along. And I also have the box, so that'll be a nice treat for someone in my life. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and declutter that, but let's see which one of these I can actually um, swatch for you based on if they are dried out or not. Golden Age is like one of my favorites. Um, as well as Half Light, and unfortunately, both of these are uh, kind of dried out now. So that's a bummer, but if you were looking at any of these, like, highly recommend these shades. This, maybe I can get, like, a little bit out. That is Golden Age. Yeah, I was able to get a little bit of the color out. Essentially, what that is is, like, it's a burnished gold. Um, so it's kind of like a smoky, more cool-toned gold. It's a very unique shade in my opinion, and I absolutely love it. Um, but yeah, they're dried out, so they need to go. This is Incantation. I don't believe this one's dried out, no. But you can see, like, I understand why they wanted to change the packaging, because like, this is gonna get under my nail. It's kind of annoying. But that's Incantation. Absolutely beautiful shade. It's just a very wearable kind of plummy, taupey pink. Really, really ideal. I absolutely love the shades. This is Exuvier. Oh my god, Exuvier is beautiful. Let's see if I can get some of this out. Do you see how, like, they just do these kind of burnished shades really, really beautifully? Okay, and one more. Love Spell. <sighs> if you are a lover of warm shades, look at this, guys. Look at that. It's, yeah. Most of the shades in the collection just have this kind of low key smokiness to them that just kind of makes them addictive and undone. Uh, super beautiful. Uh, I'm going to be keeping these three because I know that they're not dried out. I'm going to be decluttering the rest and then probably going and repurchasing like the shades that I know I love in the new format. However, we do have two of the Celestial Sphere eye soots. And these are essentially like a mix between an eye gloss and a cream shadow. So again, this is the shade Andromeda ridiculous just the 
the inspiration behind these shades is just like wild to me. Do you see like all the like little purple notes in there, but it's still just a very kind of understated kind of shade. Very unique and beautiful to add into a look. However, though I do love Andromeda, I love Serpents even more and it's just because of my slight obsession with the shade green. It's just a perfect green gold snaky, you know, kind of shade. But yeah, there it is. Really love this brand. It, everything they do kind of feels inspired. So keeping these and let's move on. And by the way, the Celestial Sphere Isolates also have the new packaging if you purchase them now. So these I think will be interesting to talk about just because I've been talking about a lot of luxury. Let's break it up with um, some more affordable shadows from Sephora and get rid of the dog hair. I have a decent amount here. And honestly, I have a feeling like there are others. And by the way, if there is like a shadow I've talked about and you're like, Amanda, where did it? Where is it? I've been mentioning this in my declutter videos, like please be patient with me because the whole reason I'm trying to do a declutter is that is that my office situation is kind of in flux and I need to do a clear out um, so I can actually find everything. But here we are, these are the Sephora Colorful Eyeshadows. This is the shade Twinkle Twinkle. It's a new favorite of mine. What you'll notice with these shadows is there's just a lot of different formulas. This is more of a very, very thin kind of sparkly top coat. Love this one. If you're looking for more of a wet looking eyeshadow at an affordable price, I think that this one is definitely a good way to go. What you get with this that you're not getting with some other sparkly shadows like at the drugstore is an incredibly fine glitter with not a ton of base pigment and that's what makes for a particularly wet looking eyeshadow and I've talked a lot about that I've actually gotten into like the physics of it in past videos but I'm happy to do an updated wet looking eyeshadow video if you guys would like to see that so um, just let me know down below if you'd like that this is a similar formula with a little bit more base pigment and this is Choco Excess which has been one of my favorites out of all of these it is just it speaks and looks like luxury to me it's one of those shades that i have seen tom ford do that i've seen charlotte tilbury do i've seen dior do shades like this so again this formula these shadows from the sephora collection when you find the right ones they can really be smash hits i love these two in particular because of that really thin kind of formula the way there's a little bit of like this translucence to them. It makes them very unique in my opinion. Some of them are duds though, in my opinion. Uh, ballet shoes, I think is just kind of meh. It, um, it's pretty, but you know, it's just, it's nothing compared to these two. So I'm going to go ahead and declutter that one. The same thing goes for Girl Talk. We're still talking about this, this kind of similar, um, thin formula but you can see just you know where's where's the sparkle they're just way less sparkly than the top two so also going to declutter this one let's party however has a little bit more pigment and i have just found that i like this one more you can see just the glitters are a little bit more prevalent this would also be a pretty kind of glittery shadow for like the office um if you don't want to go like intense like these so i am going to keep those three and i also want to be very very careful and swatch a little bit of this shade which is also in that similar formula that is completely shattered it's called hollywood calling i actually even have some in my hand right now but this is just an absolutely beautiful shade. It's one of those burnished golds that I was talking about. Again, Sephora did a really good job uh, selecting these shades. And there's even more guys. There's like so many different ones to choose from. So those are all of the more like thin textured um, shadows out of the colorful collection. Um, let's get into some of these like creamier ones though. Because if you want like this kind of stiff mousse texture, you could get that with these. This is the shade To The Moon and Back. And you know, this is not my favorite, but I know people that are going to love this. If you're someone that really likes 
for example, the shadows from M Cosmetics, their cream shadows, this formula reminds me a lot of that. It's For me, it's almost kind of dead on. The shade Pyramid is my personal favorite out of this formula. You'll see why, if I can actually freaking open it here, um, because it's a green gold. Um, but you can see, you know, how it has this kind of uh, creamy texture going on with it. I would highly recommend uh, Pyramid. It's very pretty. But I like it because it just has a little more dimension than To The Moon. I'm going to declutter To The Moon and then I'm going to keep uh, Pyramid. Then, and then lastly we have this formula which is kind of like a baked formula with these little different flecks of color. Hopefully you can see that. How there's just kind of these different flex going on here. This is a very, very pretty shade. It's the shade Demanding. There are these kind of finer pearly white sparkles that are in there. Super nice. I'm going to keep that one. I think I'm going to declutter First Light though, um, just because I love Twinkle Twinkle so much and I feel like this is kind of trying to do a similar thing. And it's just a little too yellow for me. So I'm going to declutter that one. And I'm going to be keeping this one, which I really, really enjoy. And this is the shade Fantasia. Now Fantasia is actually, I think my favorite out of these three. Come on. Yeah, that's definitely staying. And this and this shade almost gives me Ritual Defeat vibes. So yeah, they just did a really great job with this. This, I had like a whole video on these, um, the hidden gems that they are in my opinion. So keeping that, let's keep it moving. Let's talk about an interesting eyeshadow formula from Supergoop. You know, summer is here, and if you are looking to protect your eyes while also having a shadow on, this could be a really good option for you. Um, this is the shade Sunset. This is my favorite. This, I think last summer was like my go-to one and done eyeshadow because it's just, it's perfect for that. Chocolatey brown with these beautiful golden glitters. All over the eyes, I can just see myself going to the beach, showering, putting a little bit of this all over the eyes for like dinner and, you know, going on with the rest of my night. They're called the Shimmer Shades and they have SPF 30. There's absolutely no burning or stinging with these. I do get that question whenever I talk about these. And it just has this kind of undone, sultry vibe once it's on. Um, and this is the shade Daydream. I don't like Daydream as much, just shade-wise. I think that um, I think that sunset just has a little more going on. But this one might be better just for like every day if you want more of an everyday SPF 30 shade. But I don't reach for it a lot, so I'm going to declutter it personally and definitely keeping sunset. It's a great, great product. This is just kind of a random one. I wanna talk about this one because it is new. It's the Colfi Zari Eyes Eyeshadow, and this is the shade Bronze Brocade. This is a very, very beautiful formula, and if you are a fan of more of a moussey shadow, but you want a little bit more of a long-wearing touch, I think that these could definitely be a great option for you. I love it because a little bit goes a long way. You can build them up, you can shear them out, but do you see just the reflection that comes off of these? They're a little bit more wet, and I think what is able to happen because this formula is kind of like a wetter mousse is that they just kind of reflect easier for some reason, and they also set as well, so they're just going to last a little bit longer. Since I bought this, I've been wearing it kind of constantly. Do you see that? It just, there are these like beautiful fine glitters that really just make the eyelids pop. Really highly recommend this one. Um, it's definitely been one of my favorite one and done shadows as of recent. Maybe I should do an updated one and done shadow video. What do you guys think? I think it's time to finally let these go. These are the ones from M Cosmetics. I kept three of them and in my last declutter and then I have not touched them, I think, since then. They're the Cosmic Pearl Dewy Shadows. And essentially, you guys, these are like the same formula to the ones from Sephora. You see how they kind of have, it's just that like stiff, moussey, 
texture that I talked about before, though they have incredible shine, it's just like the colors are so on the nose and they're metallic versus having like these little soft pinpoint glitters that can really give you more of a wet effect, which, you know, if you're into super metallic, then absolutely yes to these. I had to take an unexpected break, but we're back. Okay, so I think what I was trying to say here is that these shades are quite on the nose and though I appreciate the formula, there's just not, there's just no multi-dimensional finer sparkle in here. So if you, you love metallic shadows, then I definitely think that this is a formula that you would love. But, but if you more so appreciate like a wet looking sparkle, something that glitters of like a different color layered throughout, these don't necessarily have that. However, I do really like this shade, Star Child. So I think I am going to keep this. So yeah, I'm going to keep this one, but I am going to go ahead and declutter these just because these are the shades that I would typically want as sparkly top coats uh, rather than like that straight metallic shift shadow. So decluttering these. You know what? Let's go ahead and talk about the Moon Dust shadows from Urban Decay. These actually have gained a lot of traction and more people know about them, which is great. But I also have some of the old ones here kind of in my um, makeup library. If you guys don't know what my makeup library is, it's where I keep products that I don't use a lot on my channel, but I use them in real life. They're also products that I reference as, you know, like a collection library, essentially to reference a color or a formula. So that being said, you can see here that I have two old Space Cowboys. <laughs> I've loved Urban Decay Space Cowboy for a very long time. This one is all shattered, so I think, you know, if one of my friends wants to repress that, they can go for it, and I'll keep this older packaging of it just kind of for the vibe. I just, you know, when I found it, it was one of the best shadows that I had ever used. So I have like a special memory with this, so I am going to keep that, but to swatch it, I might as well show you the new packaging. Space Cowboy is a beige, kind of like peachy beige with these absolutely insanely stunning white sparkles throughout that create a truly wet effect. And when I started getting into wet eyeshadows on my channel, this was the one that kind of spurred the obsession over them. It's one I'll always love because I just, I think the whole point of sparkle is to emit like a wet look. Wetness, wetness is sexy. You know, it's like why we love gloss. It looks healthy. Um, so I have always loved this shadow for that reason. It literally looks perfect almost on top of any other shadow, just right into the middle of the eye to add that wet effect. I can't really imagine not having it. Um, it's one of those holy grail products for me. So obviously very clearly keeping that. Though I will say I don't recommend Cosmic. I'm going to keep this as a reference um, because I think it's a really good indicator of what makes a wet looking eyeshadow. So here you can see though Cosmic has these beautiful fine, fine sparkles that are pretty similar to the sparkles within Space Cowboy, it has absolutely zero base pigment, just a very light amount of like a white base pigment. And contrast is really what makes a wet shadow shine. You need contrast. And without the contrast, it this kind of falls flat. And as they added just a little bit of a white base pigment to it, it kind of made it like it ended up making it less wet looking than I think it would be if this was just a a glitter. So this is not my favorite, so word to the wise. However, lithium is absolutely gorgeous. So, so good. It's one of my favorite smoky shadows, period. I have talked, I talk about it almost all the time. Just a perfect brown shadow with those wet glossy glitters throughout. One and done all over the lids. It's an entire look. Like if you want that kind of wet, sparkle, smoky, grungy vibe, you literally need one product in this. And that's why I really love these. They just feel, again, they feel inspired. I see the vision and I absolutely love it. So 
keeping that. And then let's talk about these for a second. So this is Diamond Dog, Glitter Rock, and Solstice. Solstice is still available. So let me give you a swatch of that. The formula has not changed, but if you're just more interested in a wet kind of duochrome vibe, you can get that in the shade Solstice. Obviously, this is the old packaging, but I wish they brought back Diamond Dog. I want you guys to take a look at this. This was a favorite of mine. It's pretty similar to Lithium. So there is Diamond Dog. I think it's lost a little bit of its something but it's, it's still really a winner. And sorry for swatching stuff you guys can't get, but I just, it felt, it would feel weird if I didn't. Um, and then this is the shade Glitter Rock. And I also really like this one. And there is Glitter Rock. It's a little bit more purple. Again, it's kind of dried out just like a touch, but I'm going to go ahead and keep those, the hype behind uh, Lithium and Space Cowboy is totally real. I know more people talk about Space Cowboy, but I'd love to get more people um, into Lithium because it's really a pretty shade. Now, not all of these shades are available anymore, but I've talked about the Alta Bouncy Cream Shadows for a very long time on my channel. Um, they were, I think, one of my first kind of hidden gem products that I was like really excited to bring to you all. I apologize if not all of these are available. I'm pretty sure Champagne Sorbet is. Um, but if you guys are interested in just really pretty everyday eyeshadows with a smooth kind of bouncy putty texture, these are great. They're wet looking. They're not like the wettest looking shadow, but they're just, I think they're just pretty makeup, if that makes sense. Now I have two of these. This is like one of my favorites. It's Maple Pecan. I picked up two, I believe because they were discontinuing it, but it's just like a very great everyday cooler pink brown. So, you know, very much up my alley. I also have, I'm pretty sure they do still have this shade. It's the shade Confetti. And this is like a purple with these really cool golden glitters throughout, which I really enjoy. I think it's like kind of butterfly vibes. Um, super nice. Just the way it shifts with like the shape or the contour of your eye makes it really pretty. Italian Ice is my top fave. Um, again, I apologize if they don't have it because again, they love to discontinue stuff, but it's the most wet of all of them, the most wet looking. I know that swatch, that swatch doesn't even freaking do it justice, but it's just, it's beautiful. It has the pink, it has the taupe, it has the little glitters inside. So it's a great affordable wet looking shadow that actually has a decent amount of base pigment. So it could be like a full look if that makes sense. And then lastly, Honeycomb, which this one's newer. This is quite smoky. I thought this was going to be more green than it actually is, but this is um, more so for people that want a bit of like a, you know, a smokier green, brown, gold vibe. But yeah, love these. Pretty sure they have some new shades that I gotta check out eventually. The uh, lovely stuff here. Let's keep rolling. These are the Victoria Beckham Lid Lusters. I have this beautiful shade, which is the shade Mink. If you are into like glamorous grunge, literally look no further. It's <laughs> insane. Insane. The pigment on these is absolutely ridiculous. It's like take the ones from Bodyography and Hourglass and add a creamier base to them, like creaminess times a thousand, and that's what you get out of these. But I gotta tell you, like a shade like that is just so up my alley. I think I, I want to use this on like a night out soon when I'm kind of going for like the wet grungy just that like wet, grungy, undone kind of eye. Ugh, beautiful. So that's the shade Mink. Velvet is my favorite by far. Look at this. It's ridiculous. I mean, not everyone loves green as much as I do, but if you are a lover of green, look no further because it just, it's a perfect one and done shade. Just a really, well-rounded shade too. You know, it's not too on the nose. And I think with a lot of the luxury makeup, that's what you get. You get well, 
done dialed in shades or you should in my opinion finding shades that just make your heart sing is so important and then lastly we have the shade t rose i thought i was gonna love t rose the most um it's beautiful i mean look at that absolutely beautiful but i love velvet even more so it just goes to show you i feel like there's some growth there <laughs> I don't know if it's growth since I also just love green a lot. But anyway, if you're into a really creamy, rich, sparkly shadow, if you have loved the Hourglass Scattered Lights before or the Bodyography and you're looking for something with just more pigment, that's essentially, um, you know, what these are. Now, with that more creamy texture and more pigment, I have found that these will crease faster than the others, but... But take a matte liquid shadow in the crease and, you know, that's always my prep tip for shadows that I find. I need more shades. I don't, I don't know what they're doing. I know, um, Victoria Beckham came out with, like, some shadow sticks recently, but I, I want more lip lusters. Let's venture forth into some e.l.f. eyeshadows here. So these are the no budge eyeshadows. I think these are the first, like, matte shadows that I'm talking about. And they're really... I really enjoy them. They're a little bit creamier than I was expecting just because, you know, e.l.f. is known for this kind of putty formula, but they're not. They're creamy and they got a ton of pigment. This is my favorite and I use it as a base all the time. It's called like sand dune or something. Yes, sand dune. And really, I mean, if you're looking for a taupey brown shadow to add into the crease to make everything last longer. This is a great one. If you want to use it as a base to intensify powder shadows, you can certainly do that. And they last long. You know, they're called the no bud shadows for a reason. I also have this shade, Plateau, which is way, way deeper, but also pretty. You can already see that how that's kind of set down. They don't remain really creamy. They set down. <laughs> Like I just said, that's a really, really great shade. Just that really deep, rich, like cacao kind of shade. It's it's a good one. I like the shades that they choose with these. And then this is a little pinker. It's called Canyon, like a pinky peach. Also very pretty as well. There it is. It has a little orange to it. It's almost like a super soft kind of coral, Um, but yeah. That's a great one. And then lastly, kind of a hidden fave, in my opinion, is this shade Golden Rays. It's just a beautiful shade, especially like for the summer, in my opinion, like with a tan, just adding this as like a one and done with some mascara. It's a statement, but it's like super pretty. So those are the four shades that I bought. I love these, highly recommend, and will be keeping all of them if I don't drop them first. You can see I'm trying to like take them off and it's even like, you know, they don't come off easily. So hold that thought. I'm gonna go wash my hands for like the fifth time. But if you want something more moussey, these Prismetal shadows from JCat are something I think really cool. Um, they kind of remind me of the Rowan formula. I've talked about that before, but this is the shade Chrome Crusher. This is definitely my favorite if you get one shade and there it is. But they just kind of have this wet, undone kind of elegance on the eyes, definitely more grungy and really fun to play with. They're a really cool texture. Um, they call them chrome eye mousses, so I think that checks out. Now, I was more excited about this shade. Um, it's Leopard King, but I just, it's just not my favorite. I, I think it's fine. I'm gonna go ahead and declutter that one. Um, I was just, I wasn't expecting it to be so deep. Um, and I think someone else could get more use out of that. So decluttering that. And then this is Frosty Foil. This is more of their kind of flecked, sparkly top coat kind of vibe. Um, you can't really wear this on its own or I wouldn't want to. You see how it's more flecked? Um, I think it just needs a shadow to pair with it. Great alternative though to some of like the more flecky shadows out of um, the Rowan quads. Wish they had more shades of this formula, honestly. So I'm going to keep um, these two. Next we have a couple of shadows from LA Girl. I think I'm gonna go ahead and declutter these. Um, they're, they're like glitters that are housed in like a gel. Um, at least like that's the vibe I get from them, which I just don't reach for that a lot. And also though I love this shade, um, Hologlam. 
like hollow glam. <laughs> Anyway, so I appreciate that it's like pretty wet looking. I don't reach for a strong blue shift in a lot of my makeup. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and declutter both of these. I just have not been reaching for them. All right, let's go ahead and bust out some of these ColourPop Super Shock Shadows. Um, and it really just depends on which one you get. Like obviously there are some that are kind of duds and I'll talk about those. And another thing I don't like about the ColourPop Super Shocks is that in general, they come in and out of stock like certain shades do. However, if there's one that you get, and this has been a favorite of a lot of people now, um, it's Ritz, very similar to Space Cowboy from Urban Decay. You guys can see that I use it a lot and I love it. It's definitely like a putty mousse texture. Some are more creamy than others, but it's perfection. So, you know, run, don't walk. If you still have not tried this one, I think it's great. Do I prefer Space Cowboy? Yes, only because it lasts longer on me. If you prefer more of a creamy texture, then I think there's a good chance that you prefer this to that. Um, so I'm going to, keeping that, this is a new one that I got recently on the Creators and Friends trip. So this is the shade Adaptogen. Um, ColourPop did like a, they did like a little masterclass. They didn't use this shade. It was just like came in the goodie bag. But anyway, so that is the burnished green grungy gold that like my dreams are made of. Like, look at that. This is a good one. So I'm going to be keeping that one. Going to be decluttering Koosh. I don't like it. It's way too on the nose for me, but hopefully you guys are able to tell. Like you're seeing a trend here. Like these kind of shades, they're just meh to me. They're metallic, but they're just not adding like, like a lot of light reflection the way I want them to. So decluttering that, I think I'm also going to declutter two of the mattes that I have here because I think they're like dried out and yeah, they're, they're dried out, but I love both hanky panky as well as waddles. But yeah, you can see here, they're just, they're just, yeah, they're done. This shade Tassel is incredibly similar to Cosmic from the Moondust line. And I actually prefer this to that one. You see how this just has even more sparkle? Definitely um, a better buy in my opinion. So I'm going to keep that one. You know, if you're really looking for that icy kind of shade that is more wet looking. Ice Dream is also a good option. This one kind of shattered on me. Um, and I like this one. This is actually even more wet looking in my opinion. Oh God, this is getting everywhere. Yeah. There it is right there. Um, but I'm just, I, I don't reach for it. So though I think it's really cool um, and it kind of reminds me of like, I feel like it's something Pat McGrath would do. Though I do like it, I just have to be real with myself. Like I just am not reaching for it. So I'm going to declutter that. If you can still find Cosmic Charge occasionally, I'll, I'm again, I'm gonna link everything down below, but if you can find this, immediately purchase. Well, at least for me, it would be an immediate purchase. This is way more of like a sparkly top coat, way less of that kind of mousse, mousse texture, but it's just a really perfect one and done eyeshadow. It's beautiful and just has a lot of great dimension. Let's see if I can get a couple more swatches out of this. I also picked up the shade Ripple and Ripple is also one of those shades that kind of reminds me of like Utopian Dreams from Pat McGrath, but I'm not reaching for it. <laughs> so I don't know what that says about me that I like got this and I'm like, oh, it's so pretty. And then I don't reach for it. So I'm going to declutter that as well. But it, it is pretty though, you know, it's pretty. I have a little quirky here, which is a great shade. Um, it's very similar to Cosmic Charge, but just a little warmer. This one broke on me. And it's a little dried out, I think, because of that. But I'll try and give you guys a good swatch as I put it onto my knuckles. <laughs> Doing my best here. Doing my best. There it is, though. It, it's a beautiful one. And I do highly, highly recommend it. I prefer Cosmic Charge, but that's because I like something cooler toned. If you like something slightly more warm toned, then I would go with a little quirky. And the last three shades I have are... 2 something, 216. I literally cannot read it, that's a bummer. This one is pretty as well. It's like 2 1 something, I don't, why? 
Why did they? <laughs> Last two, I have the shade Secret Garden, which is fine. It's again, it's a little warm tone for me, but if you like warm tones, I think there's a good chance you will like it. Um, but it's just quite orange for me. And honestly, I'm going to pass it along because of that. And then lastly, we have the shade Plume right here. And Plume is even more pink than the top shade. Pretty vibrant for sure. And those are the last three shades. So I'm going to be keeping these two. We got, we're getting rid of a decent amount of shades here. All right, next up, let's talk about the Charlotte Tilbury Hypnotic Pop Shots. These are like limited edition. I don't know what the point of that was, but here we are. I have four of the shades. My absolute favorite is Smoky Quartz. Um, when I bought it, it immediately became like one of my favorite one and done eyeshadows. If you love that kind of cool toned brown with the sparkles, I mean, there are other shades similar to it, but something that I really like about this is just this really, just like the thin texture and the thinner nature of these. They're not particularly like super creamy. They're more of just like that kind of pressed glitter formula with that base pigment that makes them extra reflective. Now, the other shades that I have, I have the shade rose gold and I think I might declutter this one. I can't remember which one I was kind of underwhelmed by. I mean honestly rose gold is pretty but I'm not reaching for it though so I am going to declutter that one. Now diamond eyes is really pretty. If you like that warm toned gold topper then I think you'll like this. It's pretty similar to something like Bodyography Sparkler though. I don't think you need to necessarily spend the money on this versus like the one from Bodyography. Um, you know what? I am gonna go ahead and declare that one. This one I love and it is the shade Emerald Eyes. And I think that this is a great one. It's like blue and green in the light right now. It's looking, it's crazy. Cause like when I look at it from the angle I'm at, it looks quite blue, but then in the camera, it looks quite green can see it just shifts a little bit blue occasionally it is um it is an absolutely beautiful one so definitely keeping this one definitely keeping smoky quartz as well i also have one more of the color pop forgot to swatch for you guys this is sail away huh it's fine but i'm gonna declutter it let's talk about these revlon shadows so these are the color stay um, this is my favorite right here. This one's dried out just a touch, but it's the shade Caramel. So I apologize that that's dried out a little, but it's beautiful. If you're looking for an affordable one and done shadow that looks really expensive, look no further. And also they last really well. Just kind of, you know, it's just one of those formulas. Revlon does a really good job with their shades in my opinion. Now this is the shade Pistachio. I didn't like this shade as much, but you can see this one is newer. It's like way creamier. This is kind of the texture that you should be expecting. I wish it just had a little bit more pigment in general, but I do think it's unique and it definitely is a pistachio color, but I'm just not reaching for it. So we can go ahead and declutter that. Espresso as well as chocolate are both matte shades. These are kind of like bases, but you can see they're both completely dried out. So these can go, but just know that espresso is just a little bit more of that espresso brown and chocolate has a little bit more warmth to it. I love both of these. Great affordable um, kind of base product for any of your shadows. Oh, and I do have one more. This is the shade Praline. And Praline is fine, but it's just not as good as Caramel. So I'm gonna go ahead and declutter that as well. In the same vein, um, we have Maybelline's version, which is the color tattoos. Um, High Roller is my favorite. Y'all, it's so good. It's a very similar vibe to Caramel from Revlon. This, it's just that perfect kind of taupey brown that I've been telling you guys about. This one actually has a little bit of gold to it as well too. 
absolutely great if you guys can find them. Um, I will leave links down below um, to where I could find them. But, but Urbanite, I do not like. If you want a matte shadow, go with the ones from e.l.f. or go with the ones from Revlon. But this just looks not great on me. It, it's like the texture is completely different too. Like this is waxy and kind of hard. So I'm going to go ahead and declutter that and then keep high roller. Next we have Dior Beige Mitza. It's one of my favorite single shadows that I own um, because it's perfect. Again, having a single shadow like this is just such, it just eases your mind. When you have no idea what you're going to do with your eye look, having a one and done that's just this beautiful chocolatey taupey brown, it just makes everything easier. It blends out so smoothly and just has this incredible smoothness on the eyes too. Really, really blabbed about this last year. This was one of my favorite products that I found last year. And you know, this year it's pretty much the same thing. So again, still loving this, still using it. For a summer makeup bag, forget about it. That can be just a one and done and you're out the door. One I will be decluttering is this cream shadow from Mina Cosmetics. I had a lot of hope for these. I was hoping they'd kind of be a dupe for the ones from Charlotte Tilbury, but they, when they go onto the eyes, they look really dry. That swatch is really pretty, but I, I promise you guys that when it actually goes down into the eyes, they kind of crumble and crackle and it's just not, it's not flattering in my opinion. I can, I think I can finally declutter it. I am going to go ahead and declare this Holica Holica shadow. It's the shade 02. It's just not, it's not doing anything for me, you guys. Um, and on the eyes, it looks, <laughs> this is gross, but it looks like dry skin. So I've kept this to, again, sometimes I keep bad products to like warn you guys, but I feel like I've done my due diligence here. I'm letting you guys know so I can declutter it now. Now, I do want to do an upcoming review on these from Shiseido. Um, they are the powder gel eyeshadows. I have the shade Suru Suru Taupe, which is my favorite. Great taupe. Very, you know, Rich Well Defeat Half Light. Great shade and something that I typically am drawn towards. And then there's the silk shade. I think they're pretty but I don't know if they're worth the money necessarily. I'll talk about them in an upcoming like one and done shadow video. These Sicily eyeshadows. Now I'm not gonna give you guys the review now. You guys gotta come back for that, but this is the shade Sparkling Topaz. Super, super pretty. I have the shade Silky Chestnut, which I actually have talked about before on my channel. And this is my favorite. It's just as far as like a satin shade, like, you know, a lot of people don't do satins anymore. It's just really pretty. Um, and I love that kind of just, I love a pinky brown and a lot of brands go quite warm or quite cool, but I like this kind of pink note that it has. And then lastly, I have the shade Glow Pearl. And this is what it looks like right there on the bottom. So keeping all three of those for an upcoming review. They're not cheap though, by the way, it's Sicily. I think this is like the only Sicily products that I have. Now these are the Foil Play Cream Shadows from NYX. They have been discontinued and I just don't reach for them a lot because of that. Um, I am going to keep the shade Baroque because it's my favorite and I could, you know, be able to reference this color in this shade. Just that Rowan kind of formula, if you guys are familiar with the, with the uh, Rowan quads. So keeping that one and then I'm going to go ahead and declare the other ones I have. These Mob Beauty Cream Shadows are so underrated. I have the shade 85, absolutely insane mint green, just beautiful. And then this lilac, which is the shade 83. If you're interested in matte kind of pastels, I highly recommend you guys check these out. They're just, they're really, really pretty. The formula is very creamy as you can tell, but they do set down and they last really well. So in general, I've just found them to be really beautiful. They also have a, like a pale robin egg blue, but if you mix these two together, you kind of already get that. 
So that, so that was a perk in me <laughs> choosing this one. But yeah, Mob Beauty, not enough people talk about them, but they're great. Not that you guys can tell, but I am now on day two of filming. I think this might be one of the longest videos I've ever filmed. But anyway, so we're back with a fresh head today. And these are the infallible eyeshadows from L'Oreal. I know that people really, really enjoy these and Amber Rush is like, this shadow in particular has been like a drugstore gem for a lot of people for a really long time. And I think if a shade like that is really interesting to you and you just kind of like these, these pinky golds, you know, the rose gold vibes, I highly, highly recommend it. I do think that it's a really great alternative to something like the Hourglass Scattered Lights at a more affordable price point. I'm going to keep this one, but I am going to go ahead and declutter Golden Emerald because from what I remember, I didn't really like the shade as much as I thought it was going to. Um, but let's see. Yeah, it's just a little bit too much blue green, but I know some people that that like this would look absolutely amazing on them. So I'm going to go ahead and declutter this one. But yeah, they are very comparable to like Hourglass Scattered Lights or um, the Bodyography Glitter Pigments. I wish though that there were more like glitters within to kind of add that extra dimension, like. Amber Rush doesn't really have that. It's just kind of like a straight, smooth metallic. This shade, Golden Emerald, has a, has it a little bit more, um, but I would just like to see even more, <laughs> personally. Now, this is a newer brand to me, Flavido Albedo, um, and I have three of their uh, velvet eyeshadows. I have, I have the shade Rose Quartz, and these are, they're essentially powder in my opinion. They do have like a nice slip to them though. So that is the shade Rose Gold. Rose Quartz, I mean, that's Rose Quartz. And then we have the shade Sky, which I have worn. And this is, it's really good. You can see there, like this isn't just straight powder. It, there is a little touch of creaminess to it that I really like, but there's that shade. Really, really love. Um, shades like this in general. They just, I don't know. I don't know what it is about it. And then lastly, this is the shade I was the most excited about. This is Cool Bronze. And that has just some really, really pretty shine. I definitely need to keep trying these out. So I am going to keep them. I don't know which top goes to which, but yeah, some really, really pretty shades though. So keeping these for now. Also, I really like the packaging. It's, they're really pretty to me, like kind of like mini little macaroons. Next we have the Double Date eyeshadow from Wander Beauty. It's essentially an eyeshadow duo, so you have the cream on the bottom, right there, and then you have the topper that you can add as well. This formula, the glitter topper, is quite creamy. I wish I think I got another shade like for these because the glitter topper is quite warm gold and though I love the cream shadow like I like something with just a little bit more brightness like I think I would have liked a champagne glitter topper on this a little bit more but I am excited about this and I would like to see other color stories in general so I think for now I am going to keep this. Also, by the way, I just love a duo. I love a cream base and then like a glittery topper kind of situation on top. I'll talk about, we can get into those in a second, but but yeah, I am pretty excited about this. I just need, I think I need to pick up another shade that I might just get along better with. Now let's talk about some more of those kind of duo situations that I talked about. So we have the Auric Smoke Reflex in Temper. I really need to pull this back out because it really, it's so pretty. First of all, that shade is just clearly up my alley. It has, do you see that note of pink? It's like a pinky brown taupe. Ugh, it's, it's really pretty. And then the reflect glitter on top is 
beautiful. Especially if you're someone like me, you like those wet look sparkly top coats. That's essentially what this is. So you just tap it right on and it just adds that extra little bit of twinkle. Really beautiful. Love um, this product from Auric. And is there, you know, I would call this their hero product and I think for good reason. Now similar idea are the cream and powder eye colors from Tom Ford. I can, I would imagine that Auric is excited to hear that these are being discontinued. And I really like this duo. I like the other one I'm about to talk about even more. But yeah, same concept here. But I do like Naked Bronze, the Naked Bronze duo more. You have this really pretty chocolatey brown with kind of a golden shift. This kind of a shade just I really enjoy. When I do gold, I really love um, like a brown, <laughs> like gold paired with brown, I think is really pretty, like kind of a rich brown. And then the shimmer on top, which is so, so beautiful. I added a lot, but there you go. You get the idea. All three of these are really beautiful. I am sad to see or hear that uh, Tom Ford is discontinuing these duos. I don't know why I get it. Like I understand if just like the sales weren't there, but it just feels like a bad time to necessarily do that with the way the market is shifting towards creams and wet looking eyeshadows. It just doesn't really make sense to me that they would do that unless they are aware and they're like re-releasing or coming out with a similar formula. So that could also potentially be what's happening, but you know, all speculation. Anyway, keeping all three of these. And they're also discontinuing the cream color for eyes, I think. At least this shade, uh, Platinum, which is like a cult classic. Like I don't, I don't know why they have decided to do that. I mean, it's one of the best. I would say though, you have it, you know, you have this shade in Charlotte Tilbury Oyster Pearl. Actually, can I pull that out? Actually, one of like my older videos was exactly this, just like comparing the two. You can see the formulas are super, super similar. And so are the shades. I believe Charlotte Tilbury worked very closely with Tom Ford. Like she was a creative director or something similar to that. Anyway, so you guys can see like the shades are so, so similar. They're kind of indistinguishable once they're on the eyes, honestly. I think Oyster Pearl is just like a touch cooler than Platinum. But here's the thing. I think Tom Ford has a little bit less reflection, just a touch, the formula. I mean, the textures are so similar, but the formula of the Tom Ford just sets down a little bit more than the one from uh, Charlotte Tilbury, The Eyes to Mesmerize. But honestly, they're kind of interchangeable, if I'm being honest. But yep, so I'm going to be keeping that. Don't take away my cream eyeshadows. Clearly, I, I really like them. Don't know why these brands are doing this. Now that we're on the top of like wet looking eyeshadows, not all of these are technically eyeshadows. They're kind of like crystal reflectors, diamond bomb-esque products like from Fenty. So this is the Heaven's Dew All Over Glimmer. I keep them with my single shadows because that's how I use them. This is like a really cool kind of putty-esque texture that kind of, it's just like so smooth applying. You can see it's very pretty and it just, it just gives you that kind of wet effect on the eyes. Really just an absolutely beautiful product. Similar vein is this from Makeup by Mario, the Master Crystal Reflector. This is just, the texture is a little bit stiffer, but it still has a little give to it. And then you can see like, it pretty much looks exactly the same once it's applied. They're really like an interchangeable kind of product. I think the only difference is just like the textures and which texture you're going to um, prefer. I do think it's easier to build up the one from Stila versus the one from Makeup by Mario. This was discontinued. It's from Pop Beauty. This is so old. It's the Be Noticed Eye Shimmer and Shine Bright. This is essentially like the same thing. Um, and this was cheaper when it first released. But yeah, 
Like, can you even tell the difference between all of these? Actually, I do feel like this one is kind of the brightest. Like, it's the most white of the glitters. Like, or I don't know, there's like a little bit of a blue white note to this. I'm going to declutter this just because I feel like there are people in my life that would love to play around with this and could easily do that with that product that I'm not going to be reaching for as much because you guys can't get it. So I am keeping the Stila, the Makeup by Mario, but I also wanted to quickly mention these two products that I think are kind of in a similar vein. So this is from Bobbi Brown. It's the Lux Eyeshadow in the shade Moonstone very clearly like this has a shade to it you know it's it's champagne but similar sort of vibe really pretty kind of wet look eyeshadow that i haven't talked a lot about yet on my channel very very pretty and i should probably talk about it more soon but yeah so there it is and also i really like the the luxe shadow formula i'm kind of interested in this formula from bobby brown i'm I might pick up some other shades. If you guys have any recommendations, let me know. Um, and then the Rowan Disco uh, Eye Single. Listen, I have tried this like back in the day I did and I didn't like it because it's like too flecked for even me. Like it was just too much. I do love the Rowan formulas as a whole. I just would rather use one of their quads. Now, here's the thing. I don't wanna swatch this for you guys because it hasn't even been swatched. This could be like a really good gift to someone in my life. So I'm going to declutter that. Shall we talk about phytosurgeons? So I have a lot, <laughs> a lot of their eyeshadows. They just sent me like a package. So that's why I have even more. So this is the Flash Fluorescence in Oxidized Olive. Essentially, this is like the formula is quite stiff. It's kind of like a stiffer cream eyeshadow texture that makes them last really well. But I do find that if you kind of like break the top layer a little bit, you will get even more pigment and even more creaminess. So that is oxidized olive. I think personally, these are really beautiful for those of you with more um, oily eyelids as well. And this is pewtered pine. I, by the way, I really, really like that shade. Um, you guys can tell the kind of shades I like at this point. Um, here's pewtered pine. This one doesn't have a ton of reflection. There it is right there. I think I'm going to declutter this one. Defiant Dahlia, which, which is like a classic in my opinion. You can see this one is quite well loved. Don't mind me just taking my <laughs> lint roller, <laughs> cleaning up this. The reason why is just, it's so freaking so freaking pretty. Like, very clearly that is an Amanda shade if I've ever seen one. Just that pinky, taupey, just deliciousness of this. It's still one of my favorite Phytosurgeon's products. Crystal Constellation. This is one of the new ones. Um, and I don't, I forget if I've swatched this one yet. Yeah, they just sent me a package and I think this is one of the new ones. Oh, that is pretty. Oh yeah, I really like that. Certainly keeping that. Wild Oak is like one of my favorite products they make as well. Um, I just, I really like the shade itself. So pretty. This one doesn't have like any of the micro glitters that some of the other shades have, but it is just a really pretty base eyeshadow, like just for a quick one and done get to work kind of product. You know, it's gonna last really well. Again, it's just kind of one of those dependable um, eyeshadow products. Straightforward, very pretty shades. I think Phytosurgeons does shades really well. Let's start doing some of the newer shades that they just released. This is Lunar Light Wave. And this, I think, has a little bit more of that kind of uh, micro fine glitter, like that kind of sparkly vibe. I don't know if I've worn this one yet. It's very pretty. 
it's it's really cool. This one reminds me, it has a little bit of the texture and the kind of flecked, <laughs> flecked, I don't know if that's a word, but the kind of flecked nature that some of the Rowan shadows have, this also has. It's very pretty. I'm really into this one actually. Okay, so I'm excited about that one. Maybe even more excited about Starlight Symphony because I just feel like this tone is gonna be up my alley. But let's take a look because I don't know, I can't remember if I've swatched this one yet. Actually, no, I think I like Lunar Light Wave more. But you know, it just depends on if you want more micro glitter or not. This has more micro glitter. Lastly, we have Astral Atmosphere. This one has, yeah, this has a lot of pink to it, like pink purple. Oh, this, I have a good feeling about this one. J just the texture of it is uh, a little bit more similar to Lunar Light Wave. Oh yeah, that is gorgeous. So freaking pretty. Those are from like the new collection that they came out with. That's really exciting because I think those are some of the best yet. Okay, next we have the Magnetic Maple flash fluorescence. I remember really, really enjoying this one. There it is, just really pretty. It's kind of, um, there's like a, a purple gray, gray note to it that I think is really interesting. This one's, oh, Chilled Cherry. It's another one. I'm not positive if you can get this anymore, but obviously I'll leave everything linked down below, but this is Chilled Cherry. Oh, that's pretty. Next, it's Potent Petal. This one is great as another one of like those just bases for an eye look, but I don't honestly reach for it that much. So I think I am going to, I mean, clearly I don't reach for warm tones as much as I probably should. Um, so I think I am going to declutter that one. Keep Chilled Cherry. And then lastly, we have Fractal Freesia and Orchid Overload. And... Fractal Freesia is pretty beautiful. This one needs to kind of get dug around a little bit. So, so pretty. It's like their version of like a sparkly top coat. An orchid overload. I don't know if you guys can see how like there's all these like different shifts of glitter in that one that's really pretty. Kind of reminiscent of like the 1111 palette from Rowan even just put that together. But anyway, so yeah, I'm keeping both of these. I think I want to do like a whole video on like the KBD shadows that I have. So maybe I should keep the one from Holika Holika. Now that I'm thinking about it. Where was that one? Here we have um, the glitter prism shadow. And this is from um, Misha. And I'll leave all of these down below. There is that one. I wish there was just a little more champagne to that. Um, I'm not gonna go into like reviews on this. I'm gonna save those for that upcoming video. But this is the Dewy Glossy Eyes from Misha as well. You can see there, this is the shade Honey Roast. This is a newer one to my collection I'm pretty excited about. It's the Full Shot Full Stone Glitter Shadow from a pew and this is the shade Rent the Sun. Look at that. Beautiful. Just like so many different little glitters in there. This is from Biba. It's definitely, that's not how you say it. It's not Biba, it's B-B-I-A. Um, and this is 02 Red Bean. Great, kind of like terracotta shade. More like a matte satin. Formula in the shade 04 from the same brand. You guys know how I feel about those shades. Keeping all of those and then Clavu um, Glam Brown. I have actually talked about this in a video and I let you guys know that I liked it so I can go ahead and reiterate that. But hmm, running out of room here though. Look at that. Ridiculous. <laughs> so so pretty. Hold on to your seats because we're going to be talking about those soon. I just used the lint roller <laughs> on my hand to get the sparkle off and my hand is like really, really not happy with me. Okay, so now we have these Lucent Shadows from Moira. I have three shades. I have the shade Saturn. Very, very creamy, rich formula to these. 
Um, they're not gonna wear super long. They're not really like that. They're more of like an effect eyeshadow. Um, very, very pretty. And then I think, is this my favorite shade? I think it is the shade Infinity. Like, get out of town. So pretty. They're really beautiful. I think I can probably pass one along. I think it's going to be Saturn. One more K-Beauty shadow that I forgot to mention is the Air Mousse in the shade Date. Love, 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 love this one. Similar texture to like the ColourPop shadows. Why did I dig that in so far? Well, I might as well just cover my whole hand since I took out a lot of product. But yeah, clearly... <laughs> It's really pretty. Next, we have a Cure White Single Shadow, and this is the shade Gorgeous, I think. Oh, I don't, dang it, I always do this, I always forget. It is, where is it? Oh no, it's the shade Alluring. It's, it's just one of those kind of gold shades that really is up my alley. Great texture, kind of similar to the Phytosurgeons, except a little bit creamier, might not last quite as long, but like, you know, it has a little bit more emollient, so it just kind of depends on what you're looking for. This is from the brand Play. It's their Disco Dust. I have not even used it. It's still in the box, so I'm going to go ahead and declutter that. I'm also going to declutter the Just a Sec eyeshadow from Jones Road because it's kind of just weird in my opinion. Maybe some of the other shades are better, but um, it just didn't really, didn't really blow me away. Kind of like a pink purple glitter. The texture has something different to it. It's kind of like a, <laughs> a whipped glitter. I don't even know how that's possible, but just on the eyes, it doesn't, it didn't really do much for me. Next I have the Chantakai Zebra Shadow. It's a rose gold. There it is. And uh, this is like my first experience with Chantakai eyeshadows. I just wish I picked up another shade because this kind of shade is just not exactly what I gravitate towards. It's the pink shift that kind of, that is just like not my absolute favorite. I think I might declutter it and then pick up another shade um, to see if I like another shade more. If you think that there's a Chantecaille single shadow shade that I should definitely try, um, make sure to leave it down below. Also, I'm going to declutter the Topaz Flash from Marc Jacobs. Um, I've had this for a really long time, but I don't use it because no one can get their hands on it. Also, did you see that Marc Jacobs is relaunching? That's exciting. Oh my God. How can I, <laughs> how can I declutter that? There's no way. Oh, there is no way. It's like, a more intense version of like the hourglass scattered lights, even more intense than um, I would say the bodyography glitter pigments because the it's just not as pressed, it's not as finely milled or as heavily um, pressed, so you just get way more pigment. It's definitely more rocker than the other ones. Yeah, I don't even know why I thought for a second I was gonna declutter it because listen, it's too good. I wonder if they'll release something similar to that again. I would really personally like to see that. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and declutter Lock and Key um, from Dose of Colors. Pretty shade, but I just do not really reach for it. I'm also going to declutter the Starlit Powder Pigment in the shade 13 from Makeup Forever. I just don't, I don't reach for it. I've had this for so long. I, again, I just, it's not something I reach for. I don't reach for a pigment like this because I'm always going for like more of a sparkly wet look and this is just kind of, it's shiny and pretty but it just doesn't give me the kind of scattered effect that I like. So going to declutter that one as well. Now a pigment that does kind of give me that look I was just talking about is Out of Body from About Face. This is one of their glitter pigments and it's very, very pretty. Though I will say, yeah, it takes a second to get some out, but you see how this is like just way more wet looking and like just has way more reflection. I need to pull this back out and maybe use this in a look pretty soon, but yeah, this is definitely going to be staying. 
But I do think I am going to get rid of this glitter pigment, um, Twinkle from Give. This, for some reason on the eyes, it didn't really translate the way I wanted it to. Great shade and like in theory should be something I really, really enjoy, but I don't know what it is. On the eyes, it's just something's missing. I think that there's someone in my life that would really love this. So I'm going to declutter that and wash my hands after I get rid of this one. This is Desdemona from NARS. It's been discontinued for a while and I thought I was going to keep using it, but it's just kind of sat here. Love the color, really it's pretty, but I just, I don't reach for it. So going to declutter that. I also have the Visualistic eyeshadow right here from Mizan. Another K-Beauty shadow that is gorgeous. So, so, so pretty. Can't wait to talk more about this one. Now this was a complete dud. I was so excited for this. It's the Monasi 7 uh, Beauty Evolution Eye Glow. And what shade is this? This is the shade Sublime and it just immediately on my eyes. By the way, like the swatch is pretty, like the color is really pretty, but on my eyes it like melted off. This is the Kiko shadow in the shade uh, 200. I haven't worn this in a while. Maybe I need to bring this back out and get more acclimated with it because damn, that, that looks really pretty. You can use them wet or dry. I don't know if I've used them wet yet, but yeah, I should probably keep that. This is from Clarins. It is their Ombre Sparkle in 102 Peach Girl. Kind of a similar effect to like the Flavido um, shadows I was talking about, but damn, this actually might have even more pigment and a lot of like sparkle shine to that. Excited to talk about this one in an upcoming one and done shadow video. Again, if you'd like to see that. Next, I have the Extra Dimension eyeshadow from MAC in Smoky Move. If you are a purple person, you're gonna love this. It's a, it's a very good one. And you can also use, I think you can use these wet or dry as well. Really like that one for the springtime. The Giorgio Armani Eyes to Kill Stellar Shadows. This is like a really refined version of something like the ColourPop Super Shock Shadows. So if you're someone that's like, Amanda, I don't like a ton of sparkle. I just want something like very elegant and pretty for every day. That's what you get out of these. They're just luxury, super insanely smooth and buttery in the finger. It just, it, yeah, it screams luxury. And this is also a great shade for like, the daytime, you could add a little liner, make it great for the nighttime. Just a good kind of everyday makeup product in my opinion. You'll certainly be hearing more about that one. Now, I do think I'm going to pass the AOA Velour eyeshadow on. Um, this is the shade Holiday. I do like it, but I just don't, I don't reach for it a lot. I am going to pass that along, but I do think for a buck, that's not a half bad shadow. Um, the Melted Chrome eyeshadow from Essence in the shade Zinc About You. Really, really pretty shade. Definitely keeping this one. Again, this kind of, it, it's giving the vibe of like affordable luxury. I also have the Luminous Foil eyeshadow from Ulta. It's the Rose Gold Leaf shade. I haven't used this in a while. I bought it like a really long time ago. Um, but this is great for those of you that like that flecked, sparkly, textured kind of look. You can, you know, really melt it down into the skin and get like, you know, that intense kind of metallic look. But you can also tap it in and just get something more, um, you know, textured and sparkly. I haven't used it in a while. I don't know why. It's so pretty. Um, definitely keeping this. Next we have the Ink Credible Eye Pigment. And this is Daily Drams. Love this one. Really difficult to find now, unfortunately, but it's just a really, really pretty shade. I'm keeping it because I really like it, but if I can find it still, I'll leave it down below. It's like really affordable too. It's just a very pretty multi-dimensional glitter. And I prefer something like this to like the really loose pigments. Cause I mean, this is loose, but I still feel like I can use my finger more easily. I don't know. Keeping that, we have a couple of shadows from Chanel. We have Pantene Bronze, and this is a beautiful, beautiful green gold shade. 
a good shade. I don't really reach for this a ton as of recent, and I know it's kind of like a cult favorite product from Chanel. I hope they don't discontinue it. Again, I'm gonna try and like really do my due diligence and search for all of these shadows for you guys. So if you appreciate that, um, you know, using any of the links down below does help to support my channel. But yeah, so this is just a really, really stunning one. Chanel, New Moon. I actually did a video talking about this product. Uh, it is, this one is discontinued and it's by far one of my favorite shadows I've ever used. So it's kind of a huge bummer, but look at that, you guys. Just the insane sparkle. The, the glitters are so fine and reflective and wet looking, but there's incredible dimension and depth to the shade itself. It's really, really smooth on the finger. It applies evenly and beautifully. It blends out like a dream. Complexity to the color, which is why it's very difficult to dupe. Um, but anyway, keeping those. Sorry to talk about something I love that you guys can't get. And on that note, let's talk about some more of the same kind of vibe. Um, Natasha Denona Chroma Crystal Top Coats. Um, have been discontinued, but this is the shade Peach. Love, 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 love these. It's just like that wet, sparkly, glossy top coat. I mean, insane. Um, and then the shade Gray Brown is also an absolute favorite. Love this one for like on top of a smoky eye. Both of them are just so freaking pretty, but Jaclyn Hill came out with essentially the same formula in very similar shades, um, by the way, keeping these, but she came out with the same formula, similar shades, and then also discontinued them. Like, I don't know. This is the shade North Star. Now this shade is a little bit different than the other ones, but you know, it's more warm, super pretty. Tinsel, which is essentially the same as like Gray Brown from Natasha Denona right there. You can see like, they're so, so similar. Let me build up that swatch a little bit more and get it all on my nail as well. Yeah, hopefully you guys can see that. And then lastly, we have the shade Glassy. And then the shade Glassy is essentially um, the shade Peach from Natasha Denona. So, so yeah, um, I don't know. I guess these kind of formulas don't work. They don't sell. I don't know why because they're so unique and freaking beautiful. Keeping all three of these until another brand decides to try their hand at these. And last but not least, we have these shadows from Lorac. Yes, so those are multiples, but I have, I think, almost all of the colors. So I don't know if you can hear that, but they do dry up in the the thing and then like the pigment is very difficult to get out so that's something i've not liked about these um again this is the shade velvet i'm decluttering this one but hopefully this velvet is not as dried up still a little bit honestly but not particularly so decluttering those but let's see how these other shades have held up it's the shade suede this one i think actually we can get like a good amount of pigment from oh yeah and on top of that, look at how freaking pretty. Yeah, this one is definitely staying and you can still get them. Then we have the shade Lace right here. Really nice for like that everyday, this one has dried out a little bit, you can see. Really nice for that like everyday kind of champagne. Look at that. And they have just like a really beautiful, finely milled um, quality to them like the glitters are very fine and feel you know sparkly and fun but it's still like grown up um I don't know a lot of the Lorac palettes I've used also kind of give me the vibe that these give me um next we have the shade Silk which I don't really see see I feel like this shade has not dried out and like they're supposed to have this kind of texture but anyway, so here's the shade Silk. Ironically, I don't necessarily love that shade because um, it's just quite warm. So I'm going to keep it for now because I feel like I should feature these in an upcoming video. 
And then lastly, we have the shade Cashmere, which has been a favorite. Oh, look at this. Ridiculous. So, so pretty. But anyway, those are the Lorac, hmm, what are they called? Uh, again, I'll leave everything down below. All right, now let's go ahead and throw in here and organize all of the shadows that I'm going to declutter. All right, I think this is a decent amount of product. And these are all the ones that I'm still left with. But anyway, I hope that you all really enjoyed today's video. Again, I'm going to leave every single product that I talked about down below. And again, if you really appreciate these super long videos, giving this video a thumbs up does help me. So I really appreciate you all doing that. Make sure you are subscribed before you go and I will see you all in my next one.